the Beta Levi of Yosef Dover Levi, Slovichik, Alava Shalom. The Beta Levi put together a nice kuntres, a nice a, uh, section about Bitachon that we're going over over these last couple of weeks. We've gone over several paragraphs, several sections, and we'll continue tonight to try to see what else we can do to rectify ourselves. Because if we can rectify ourselves, we could fix ourselves, that means that we can fix our family. If we can fix our family, that means we could probably fix a couple of families. If we could fix a few families, we could fix an entire neighborhood, a community. If we can fix a community, we can bring Mashiach. Why? Because Chazal says, what's it going to take for Mashiach to come? So there's a famous conversation the Gemara says, between Rabbi Eliezer Agadol, Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokinos, and his student Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, as big as he was, with 24,000 students, also had a rabbi. If he had a rabbi, needless to say, we need a rabbi. Now, there's a famous conversation between them. When Rabbi Akiva asked Rabbi Eliezer, Kvod Arav, when is Mashiach going to come? You know you have Ruach Kodesh. You know your Torah is like an endless ocean. When you say Torah, when you speak Torah, it's face with light like Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, a lot of the Goyim, the Christians and the others that are ignorant, think that Moshe Rabbeinu had horns on his head. You see, sometimes there's statues little statues, old statues, sometimes even new, of Moshe Rabbeinu. And they have him with horns. Or they see people that uh, make fun of Jews and they put Jews with horns. Why? Because they believe that Moshe Rabbeinu had horns. Why? Because they mistranslated the Torah and translated the word Keren to horns. It does mean horns, but not in the way that the Torah had it. When Moshe Rabbeinu came down from, from uh, Mount Sinai, it says that he had keren o al panav. He had a, uh, a light, a light on him. But they, they thought they had horns on him. So people think that Moshe Rabbeinu had the uh, horns. But anyway, centuries later, over a thousand years later, Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinos when he spoke Torah, when he taught Torah, he had the same type of awe on his face, same type of light on his face, to such an extent that you didn't need lights. It was so light, his face was so light, that when he taught Torah, they didn't know whether it was day or night outside. They didn't know it was day or night. Why? There was so much light in the room from his face they didn't know it could be 3 o'clock in the morning, it could be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We have no idea. Why? <laughs> Look how light it is. That's how light his face was. So now, Rabbi Akiva asked his rabbi, you have this. You call us Koroshim. You must know when the Mashiach is going to come. He says, yes, I know. He says, when is it going to come? He says, the Mashiach is going to come when we have one minyan. One minyan, ten people. In one keila, one minyan, ten people in one keila, do tshuva. Mashiach's going to come right away. Now when everybody does tshuva, you have millions of people do tshuva, it's never going to happen. Everybody knows that. Even Chazal says it. You think that everybody's going to be zakai, you think that the whole generation will do tshuva, it's never going to happen. There's always going to be a few reshaim. You think everybody's going to be reshaim? No, it's not true. There's always going to be a few tzaddikim. So when Mashiach is going to come, Rabbi Elizabeth and Hokino says, when one keila, ten people, and one minyan, they all agree on who is the Baal Kore. Who is going to say Kaddish? Who is going to do this? Who is going to do that? They all agree on the Minhagim. 
They all agree on this. They all agree on everything. One keila on the same page. This, Rabotai Karim, on one end, should make us really, really sad. Why? 2,000 years, we haven't found one keila that's kosher. This is a disaster that we are in. On the other hand, it also tells us that it's possible for you to bring Mashiach. Yeah, you in the middle of Oregon with only 10 Jews in the entire Keilah. All of Oregon has 10 Jews. You can bring Mashiach in Oregon. You are in Montana with only 10 Jews there. You are in the middle of Arkansas. You are in the middle of Delaware. You are in the middle of New York. You are in the middle of anywhere. Middle of Netanya where it's surrounded by Pritzut, the beach and everything else. In Netanya, in Eretz Yisrael, you can bring Mashiach. Just get 10 kosher people to agree. But not fake agree. Hashem knows what's in your heart. Not fake agree. Real agree. Real B'nai Torah. You can do it. You can do it if you want to bring Mashiach. Now, one of the main things that each one of us needs to do in order to get at least ourselves to that level is to acquire a real bitachun. To acquire real confidence in Hashem, confidence that He's going to help us, take us out of the darkness that we're in at times, confidence that He's monitoring everything and anything that's happening in our life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And when we do that, when we change ourselves, we can change our family. If we change our family, we could change a couple of families and eventually get to a point of changing our community. If we change our community, we can mamash bring Mashiach. You don't have to think global. Just think local. And you'll end up doing global anyway.